Yeah. So what happens is along with this electrons, the protons are also going to get transported across this membrane. Okay, because primary acceptor, uh, see, now I already told you that in the chloroplast is the membranous system because it is having two membrane that is outer membrane and inner membrane. So I'll just write it down in the like flow chart. Okay, so here, whatever the H2O is there, it's going to split in what? The H plus ion, which is nothing but your proton. Now, what happens to this proton? Along with the electrons, it is going to pass down along with electrons. Okay, it will pass down or transport or get transported through where? The membrane. Okay, now over here, whatever the outer side of the membrane is there, outer membrane, that is going to act as what? A primary acceptor of electron. Primary acceptor of electron. Now what happens over here is when this is being done, that is the protons and electrons carried or transported across the membrane, here there will be an enzyme which is called as NADP reductase. Now where this is located, this particular enzyme will be present in the stoma side of the membrane. Right. So now here what will happen is the electrons which are there, it will come out from that particular acceptor. Okay. And it will go to what? The, now because we have first the PS2 and then the PS1. Right. So whatever electrons are there, it is going to come out from the acceptor of the electron of PS1. Okay, so here what happens is NADP reductase enzyme means we are going to see the conversion of NADP to NADPH, right? So for this purpose, what is important is the electrons which are there, which is going to come out from that particular acceptor of the PS1. So this particular electrons is going to come out from where? The acceptor of electron PS1. If this is happening, then only the NADP uh, will be converted to NADPH. So when this is happening, whatever protons are there, means here, I'll just write it, NADP is there, right? So that will be converted to NADP, NADP plus H plus. Okay, so here what will happen is whatever the protons are there, they will be removed from the stoma. So when this thing is happening, that is the electrons getting accepted, protons formed and getting removed, this thing is only called as what? A proton gradient. Okay? This thing is only called as what? A proton gradient. So where does this proton gradient occur? It is going to occur across the thylakoid membrane. Okay, so now again, what happens is because of the two photosynthesis phase or means the photosystems. Now, this particular proton gradient is next going to get broken down. Okay, so here what will happen is the gradient is broken down. So now... When the gradient is broken down, why it is broken down first of all? Because that protons which are there, they are removed from the stroma, right? So if the proton is removed from the stroma, okay, that why that proton gradient will remain as it is, right? So because of that, whatever the gradient is there, that is broken down. And this breaking down happens due to the movement of proton across the membrane to the stroma. Okay, so this whatever breaking down of the proton is there across the membrane till it reaches the stroma, 
this is called as a channel of F0 and uh, F0 of ATPase. Okay, so here at this time, what is going to happen is one of the enzyme, which is nothing but the NADP reductase, it is going to get embedded in this transmembrane channel that is F0 of AT base. Okay, and hence what will happen over here is the other one phase, which is there, which is the F1 phase. So in F1 phase, what is going to happen is it is going to make more and more of ATP. Right. So in the F0 phase, NADP H has been created, whereas in the F1 phase, what is created? ATP is created. So in short, okay, in this particular uh, chemio osmosis, what happens is just we are going to see what the eight, why or how the ATP is been produced and what that phase is actually called as. So where the ATP synthesis occurs actually in the thylakoid of the chloroplast. Okay, so this happens when the, uh, along with the electrons, the protons are also passed down through the electron transport system or A, or also you can say it as what? The chain, the transmembrane channel. Transmembrane channel. Okay, so what happens is, whatever the NADP reductase is there, which is present inside the stoma, okay, which is present where? Inside the stoma. From there, the NADP is been converted into NADPH. So whatever the H is there, that is nothing but the proton. Okay, so when this is happening, there occurs a proton gradient, which then gets broken down because there is a movement of proton across the membranes of the thylakoid. And that particular channel is called as F0 of ATPase. Means here what happens is on the one side, NADPH is created and on the other side, ATP is formed. Right. So whatever the product of the light reaction is there, it is very important for the process of light uh, dark reaction to get occurred. So now we have finished with the light phase. Now we are going to see the dark reaction or you can say the biosynthetic phase. Now already we know in the dark reaction what is going to take place is the uh, whatever carbon dioxide is there that has been reduced into sugars, glucose molecules, right? So this particular dark reaction is also called as biosynthetic phase. Okay, so in this three, uh, two, like two types of cycle is there, C3, C4. Okay, so two types of cycles, C3 and C4. C3 is called as the Kelvin cycle, whereas the C4 is called as the Hatch and Slack pathway. Okay, so the first, let's see what is actually this dark reaction or a biosynthetic phase. Okay, now here what happens is, we already know that ATP and NDPH is very useful in producing what? The food molecules, because here when the CO2 is getting reduced into sugar, then that is only the storage form of the starch which is present in the plants, okay? That is how food is prepared. So here what happens is, it is independent of light. You don't need light over here. So hence, this is called as a dark phase. And where this actually occurs is, it takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast. Okay, so now I told you two cycles are there, C1 and uh, C3 and C4, that is the Kelvin and Hatchflat cycles. So here what happens is in some plants, whenever a carbon dioxide is getting fixed, it becomes what a four carbon compound or a three carbon compound. So depending upon how much carbon compound has been produced, C3 and C4 cycle is there. Okay, so what happens is in some plants, Whatever the first product will be there after the CO2 fixation, it's either a three carbon compound or a four carbon compound. Right? So if it's a, a three carbon compound, C3 cycle will take place. 
if it's a four carbon compound, C4 cycle will take place. So in the C3, okay, whatever the three carbon compound is there, that is called as what? Three phospho glyceric acid, PGA. Whereas the C4 in which the four carbon compound has been produced, it is called as oxaloacetic acid. Okay, so the first one that we are going to see is the C3 or the Calvin cycle. Now, these two cycles are only on the basis of how many carbon atom products it's going to give you. So, the first thing, C3, also known as the Calvin. Right, so here, mostly three steps will be there. Okay, that is carboxylation. Reduction, regeneration. Okay, so now uh, one important thing is you have to keep in mind C3 and C4 is dark reaction, right? So whatever reaction is happening in the dark, obviously you cannot see it, right? So for that purpose, you need something. What you need is a radioactive carbon, right? So over here, a radioactive carbon was used. which is 14C. Okay, so Melvin Kelvin, he was the one who discovered this Kelvin cycle. So because it was a dark phase reaction, so in order to see it, he used a radioactive carbon, that is the 14C. Okay, so now let's see what are the three phases over here. Now already we know CO2 is going to be the primary acceptor because it is going to get reduced into the sugar. So over here, what happens is the primary acceptor, which is CO2. Okay, this is going to be a 5-carbon ketose sugar called as ribulose by phosphate. It's also known as RUPP. Okay, so this particular RUBP, which is a keto sugar, this is going to get used in regeneration of what? The sugar. Okay, then from this only, the sugar is being regenerated. So let's see in detail the three processes. Okay, so the first one is the Carboxylation. Carboxylation means what? It is nothing but fixing CO2. Right? So now we already know that in the first step, CO2 is going to get converted into PGA. Right? The three That is the three phosphoglyceric acid. So here, first, initially, there will be a carboxylation of whom? The RUBP, that is a keto sugar, right? So the carboxylation of the RUBP, which is a keto sugar, is going to take place in the presence of an enzyme called as RUBP carboxylase. So this is going to result in the formation of what? 3PGA. Okay, so this enzyme, in short, you can write it as Rubisco also. Rubisco. Okay, so this is the first step. In the second step now, what happens is reduction series is going to take place because we have to produce a sugar that is nothing but the glucose. So here, the reaction will lead to what? Formation of reduction leads to the formation of glucose. Okay, so for this purpose, you need what? Here you will be using the two molecules of ATP and 
the two molecules of NADPH. Okay, because what happened happens over here is if you want to reduce one molecule of CO2, then you will need two molecule of ATP and two molecule of NADPH. Okay, so this thing is for what? This is for the reduction of one molecule of CO2. Okay, so this in this cycle, six turns will be there. Okay, so that the glue one uh, molecule of glucose should be produced. So six turns of cycle will be there. Or six turns of cycles are required. Okay, for what? For the removal of just one molecule of glucose from this particular pathway. So once that part after the six turn, that is once the one molecule of the glucose gets removed from this pathway, Next, what takes place is the regeneration. So, regeneration means what? Generating it again. So, again, this cycle has to get continued, right? So, for that purpose only, again, there will be a generation of what? RUBP molecules. And then there will be what? Continuation of the cycle. So here in the regeneration process, the number of ATP which is required is one molecule of ATP. Okay, so in the exam, when you are writing this along with the steps, you have to draw that cycle also. Fine, then only if you draw the cycle clearly, then you will be able to explain that particular cycle also well. Fine, so this is all about the C3 cycle, okay, which is called as the Kelvin cycle, right? So now over here, the very important thing that you should keep in mind is how many ATP molecules, how many NADPH is required over here in the C3 cycle, okay? So like we can say that for every CO2 molecule, which is going to enter into the, what do you say, Kelvin cycle. Kelvin cycle is going to require what three molecules of ATP, two molecules of NADPH. Okay, so if you want to make one molecule of glucose, How many turns in a cycle is required? Six turns. Okay, so in and out, if you want to uh, like know about that particular thing. Okay, in and out cycle, if you want to know how much is coming in and how much is going out. So you have the six CO2 and because six CO2 will give one glucose molecule. Okay, so here... 18 ATPs and 12 NADPH. Same over here also. 18 ATP, 12 NADPH. Okay, so if someone asks you that for the synthesis of one molecule of glucose, total in the six turns of cycle, how much ATP and NADPH is required? 18 ATP and 12 NADPH is being required. Okay, so this is all about the C4 cycle. Then the next one, C4. Also called as the Hatch-Slack pathway. So this uh, particular pathway, okay, uh, whatever the experiment was done by this Hatch and Slack, it was mainly done for the tropical region growing plants such as maize or sugar cane like that. For that plant, this thing was, uh, experiment was carried out. So here I told you C4 means here what, I, what you're going to get is a 4-carbon compound which is a oxaloacetic acid, right? So that is why only it's called as what? C4. And what are the C4 plants which are involved in it? Maize, 
or sugar cane so on right and what is the compound which you get over here oxaloacetic acid which is a four carbon compound fine so now over here one important term okay now this c4 plants which are there it is having something which is called as krenz or krenz anatomy okay so whatever the leaves are there of the c4 plants it has this krenz anatomy now what is this krenz anatomy okay we already know about the chloroplast and its structure and all those stuff right but these particular plants which are there it is going to show you these plants okay they show what two types of photosynthetic cells mesophyll cells and a bundle sheet cells okay so whatever vascular bundles are there which are present in the c4 plants they are having this or uh, two types of photosynthetic cell mesophyll cells and bundle sheet cells okay so basically these chloroplasts are having what everything two so hence they are what dimorphic these chloroplasts are what dimorphic okay so hence whatever their mesophyll cells are there they will be in the grana as well as bundle of sheet cells that is why we have written two photosynthetic cells mesophyll cells and bundle sheet cells okay that is why we say that the c4 plants have a krans anatomy fine so now what is this actually the c4 pathway now again the primary acceptor co2 we are going to consider over here okay so the primary co2 acceptor is whom now over here a three carbon component or a three carbon molecule which is pep so what is pep pep is nothing but the phospho nol phosphonol pyruvate okay so whatever the co2 who is the primary acceptor is who a three carbon molecule which is pep that is phosphonol pyruvate now this particular three carbon molecule is present in the mesophyll cells and here also like there how we saw an enzyme here also we need an enzyme which is called as what pep carboxylase pep carboxylase right because here now you have to form a four carbon compound that is oxaloacetic acid okay and one more four carbon component will be produced over here which is called as a malic acid okay so here what happens is um, this particular oxaloacetic acid will be formed in the mesophyll cell itself because this reaction is going to take place over there right so here whatever the oaa is there that is further it will it will form a four carbon compound which is called as the malic acid or aspartic acid now i told you it's a krans anatomy so whatever produced over here is going to get transported to where to the bundle sheet cells now what happens in this bundle sheet cells in this bundle sheet cells the co2 is broken down into a three carbon molecule okay so this particular three carbon molecule is going to return back to the mesophyll cell so that it can form what pp right so now 
Once the CO2 molecules are released in this particular bundle sheet cells, now it is going to enter into the first cycle which we saw now, that was the C3. It's the Kelvin cycle. So now there, the Rubisco enzyme will be present and that is going to form what? Sugar. So from the PEP, what happens? See now, whatever this particular reaction is there, till the oxaloacetic acid formation, it is going to take place where? In the mesophyll cell, right? So now what happens is, that oxaloacetic, uh, 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 whatever the OAA is there, that is going to get converted into an another four carbon compound, which is called as malic acid. Now, once it's converted into malic acid, what is happening is it is going to get transported to the bundle sheet cells. Now, in the bundle sheet cells only, the carbon dioxide is going to get broken down into the three carbon molecule, which is PEP. Okay, three carbon molecule is who? The PEP. So PEP, we know three carbon molecule where it is formed in the Kelvin cycle. So now again, the CO2 molecule, it gets released into the bundle sheet cells and from there it will enter into the C3 cycle, which is the Kelvin cycle. And then again, the same procedure. Okay, whatever the CO2 molecules are there, that will enter into the C3 cycle. So here in the C3 cycle, what happens is Rubisco enzyme will be present and that Rubisco enzyme will convert it into a sugar. That's it. Okay, so each and every cycle is interrelated. Okay, from the C3, it come, uh, comes the C4. And from the C4, again, it's, it goes to the C3. Okay, so the thing that you have to keep in mind over here is the mesophyll cells only is for the C3. But for, when you're coming for the C4, it includes what? A bundle sheet cell as well. Right? So, uh, directly what happens is the C3 cycle, directly it cannot, uh, what do you say, produce the sugar. Okay? Because what happens is, whatever the C3 cycle is there, I'll just write it down. The C3 cycle it cannot directly occur in the mesophyll cell. Of the C4 plants. Why this happens is because it is not having that particular main enzyme which is Rubisco. So because it lacks Rubisco. Okay, so in order for the C3 cycle to happen in the mesophyll cells, C4 cycle is very important because it is lacking that particular enzyme that is Rubisco. Okay, so where this Rubisco is found actually in more amount, this is found in abundant in the C4 plants. C4 plants in abundance. That is which part of C4 plants? Bundle sheet. Right? So this is all about what? The C4 plants. So if you want to differentiate between the C3 and C4 plant, C3, C4. Okay, so here in the C3, whatever, now both are photosynthesis, uh, part of photosynthesis process only. So here, whatever the photosynthesis processes, it will occur in the mesophyll cells. And here it will occur in both the mesophyll as well as bundle sheet. Why it occurs also in bundle sheet? Because it needs the Rubisco enzyme for the conversion of the CO2 to the, um, this one, uh, the sugar. Okay, then here the carbon dioxide acceptor, who is it? Is the Rubisco. And here, whatever the carbon dioxide acceptor is there, that is the PEP carboxylase. Now in the C3, there is no about special anatomy. So hence you can write the Kranz anatomy is absent and here it's present 
Then here in the C3, what is the uh, first product, a uh, carbon-3 product formed? It's the PGA. That is the 3 phosphoglyceric acid. Whereas in the C4, which four carbon product has been produced? OAA. That is oxaloacetic acid. Now for both the thing, the optimum temperature is very important. So over here, whatever the optimal temperature is there, that will be almost 20 to 25 degrees. Whereas over here, it's uh, 35 to 44. Okay, so here one more important factor is called as the photorespiration. Okay, so for, now what is this photorespiration? Okay, in the name itself, photo and respiration. So photorespiration means nothing but Now here, it's a process where, a process where there is no formation of ATP or NADPH. But what happens is it will utilize this ATP, but it utilizes the ATP with release of CO2. Actually, it doesn't have any importance, okay? Uh, because it's also a light-dependent process where it will provide an oxygenation to the RUBP so that it can release what? Carbon dioxide to the plants. Okay, so for that purpose, this photorespiration is actually present. So what is the main aim is oxygenation oxygenation of RUBP to release CO2. But what happens is if a photorespiration is taking place, it is going to decrease the photosynthesis process. Okay. So the photorespiration decreases the rate of photosynthesis. Because obviously the oxygen is going to get decreased. So that's the reason. So if there is a presence of light and if there is a higher concentration of O2, then obviously the cycles will run very smoothly. That means the oxygen is going to bind with that Rubisco enzyme and then you're going to get the products that is PG and o OAA, which we saw, right? So uh, here in this process during the photo, uh, photorespiration, Almost 75% of the carbon dioxide is lost. When there is what? Oxygenation given to RUBP. Right? So, whatever the C3, C4 pathways are there, you will see that here, chloroplast, then mitochondria, peroxisomes, all this are involved. Okay, but one more important thing is this photorespiration will not occur in C4. Okay, in the C4 plants, you will not see any photorespiration. Hence, you can say in the sixth differentiation that in the C3 plants, photorespiratory loss will be high, whereas in the C4 plants, the photorespiration is not going to take place.